value to zero. <laughs> 2,000 years ago, Jesus came, and here we are today waiting for the Lord to come back in about five minutes. Okay? This is the Bible view of history. On this chart, every inch is 150 years. That's a long time. If I was to show you what the 20 billion year chart would look like at the same scale as this one, this bottom chart would have to be 2,100 miles long. That's from Pensacola to Portland, Oregon. I don't want to carry a chart that big, so I made a new scale for this one, okay? The professor said he did not know where the matter came from. I said, well, sir, could you tell me where the laws came from? You know, the universe is run by laws. Gravity, centrifugal force, inertia, uh, Boyle's law, Cole's law. You eat that with potato salad? Uh, who made the laws, hmm? And by the way, why aren't the laws still evolving? Hmm? Why are the laws always so steady? The laws don't evolve. Gravity's consistent. Why don't you weigh more 10 pounds one day than you do? The, you say, I do. No, I'm not, never mind. Uh, where did the energy come from? I mean, who bought the gas to run this machine? It takes energy to make something move. Where did the energy come from? The professor said, well, we don't know about that. I said, sir, could I ask you another question? He said, sure. What else would you like to know? Else? What do you mean else? You haven't told me nothing yet. I said, does Berkeley have a merry-go-round? <laughs> How many of you know what a merry-go-round is? You go round, round, round till you puke, okay? He said, no, we don't have a merry-go-round at Berkeley. I said, you ought to get one, man. You could learn some good science on a merry-go-round. If you put some fourth graders on a merry-go-round, any fourth graders in here? Who's in fourth grade? All right, I like fourth graders. I spent the best five years of my life in the fourth grade. That was before they diagnosed ADD. Oh. We're going to put some fourth graders on the merry-go-round, and we're going to get the high school football team out there to get it spinning clockwise as fast as it will possibly go. Now, if you have a digital watch, you may not know what clockwise means. Uh, I'll we'll tell you later, okay? We're going to spin the merry-go-round clockwise. The kids are going to go through four phases. They start off in phase one. They're screaming at the football players, come on, let's go. Can't you go faster? Let's go. Move it, move it. You get up around 30 miles an hour. The kids enter phase two where they stop screaming. They just quietly concentrate on trying to hang on for dear life. <laughs> you get up around 60 miles an hour and the kids enter phase three where they start screaming again. But now they're screaming, stop, stop, please slow down. Don't stop, they'll keep going faster and faster. When you get to about 100 miles an hour, you should go into phase four. That's where the kids begin to fly off the merry-go-round. <laughs> now when this happens, you will notice an interesting phenomena of physics. If the merry-go-round is spinning clockwise, when the kid flies off, the kid will be spinning clockwise until he encounters resistance, like a tree or telephone pole. That's because of a law known as the conservation of angular momentum. You see, if a spinning object breaks apart in a frictionless environment, the fragments will always spin the same way because the outside's moving faster than the inside. People say, what if they hit each other? They can't hit each other. Drop a hand grenade off, let it explode. The longer you wait, the further apart the fragments become. How are they going to hit each other out there in the field someplace? Uh, duh. We could talk all night about the conservation of angular momentum, but the professor said, yes, I'm familiar with the conservation laws. I said, well, then good, sir. I have a question for you. If the universe began as a swirling dot, sh big bang, like you said, shouldn't everything be spinning the same way? He said, yes. I said, would you tell me why then that two and possibly three of the planets are spinning backwards? Can you tell me why eight of the 91 known moons are spinning backwards? Will you tell me why four planets have moons going both directions at the same time? Can you explain to me why some whole galaxies are spinning backwards? He said, that's interesting. <laughs> I said, no, sir, that's more than interesting. That's kind of hard on your Big Bang Theory. He said, why do you think they're going backwards? I was hoping he was going to ask that. I said, sir, it's very simple. You see, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and God did it that way on purpose, just to make the Big Bang Theory look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> now, I do believe in the Big Bang, and I told him I believe in the Big Bang, because the Bible teaches the Big Bang. It says, the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. The original Greek, that's a big bang. Mm -hmm. See? So there's going to be a big bang, but it didn't happen yet. So kids, if you go to school and some teacher says, do you believe in the big bang? You can say, yes, I do, and you better get saved and get ready for it. <laughs> the big bang is coming soon to a city near you. Mm -hmm. 
By the way, if the Big Bang Theory were true, the matter would be evenly distributed throughout the universe, and it's not. It's lumpy. They're called galaxies, and in bazillions of miles of nothing, called voids. That's why they're so desperate to come up with theories like black holes, dark matter, antimatter. They're looking for some way to ex salvage the Big Bang and ex still explain the missing matter. Hmm. Even Fred Hoyle said, I have little hesitation saying a sickly pall now hangs over the Big Bang Theory. The theory's been dead for 20 years. They just don't want to bury it because they don't have a replacement. The only other thing they thought of is God did it. Oh, we don't want that. So let's hang on to the Big Bang Theory. Get the book The Evolution Cruncher if you want a whole lot more on that. Here, the second law of thermodynamics. Now, the word thermodynamics, thermo means heat and dynamics means power. So it's the power of heat. You, you can't just create things from nothing. And whenever there's an exchange of energy, there's something lost. The second law of thermodynamics tells us everything tends toward disorder. If you leave something alone for a while, it's going to rot, rust, die, fall apart, or break down. Nothing gets better by itself. That's what the Bible teaches. It says, The heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish. They wax old as doth a garment. Nothing gets better by itself. Okay? Take a look at your hairdo when you wake up in the morning. You'll see what I'm talking about. Everything tends toward chaos. There is Sue at 20. Here she is at 90. And here she is at 3,000. Mm -hmm. so, it's going to be you too, by the way, and me too. No. But the textbook says we're getting better. Humans probably evolved from bacteria more than 4 billion years ago. Was your great, 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 great grandpa bacteria? Now, the evolutionists will say, Hovind, don't you know you can add energy and overcome the second law of thermodynamics? And they'll say the sun adds energy to the earth, so that's how evolution works, because the earth receives extra energy. Well, it sounds good, but that doesn't, it's not true, okay? It's a deceitful argument. You see, the universe is a closed system by definition. Secondly, adding energy is destructive unless there's something to use the energy. Just adding energy doesn't solve it. Did you know the Japanese added a whole bunch of energy to Pearl Harbor one day? They did not organize a thing for us, did they? A couple of years later, we returned the favor and added energy to some of their cities, didn't we? Didn't organize nothing. I'm telling you, folks, adding energy is destructive. See, the sun adds energy to your house, but it's going to destroy the roof on your house, not build it. The sun's energy will destroy your entire house. The sun's energy will destroy the roof on your car. It'll destroy the paint job on your car. It'll destroy the fabric and your drapes and your upholstery and your carpet. There's only one thing that can use the sun's energy, chlorophyll. And one little plant cell is more complex than a space shuttle. And you want to believe it evolved by chance, you just go ahead and enjoy yourself. I don't care what you believe, but that's not science. Now, this textbook shows the kids a fossil of a starfish. And it says, boys and girls, 3.4 billion years old, the remains of the early ancestors of modern human beings. Was your great, 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 grandpa a starfish? I bet he could pick peaches like crazy. All right, now please do not laugh at this next picture. This will be a picture of my brother when he first wakes up in the morning after his first cup of coffee, which apparently was a little too strong. By the way, kids, we need to warn you, listen carefully. Kids, pay attention. Do not drink coffee. Because if you drink coffee when you're young, when you get married, your babies will be born naked and illiterate. And tea is worse. There was an Indian once that drank four gallons of iced tea. That night he drowned in his teepee. <laughs> Serious stuff. Don't drink that. Anyway, this, this will be a picture of my brother. Now, please don't laugh. He can't help it. There he is right there. Notice what the textbook says. 30 million years ago. Now, kids, let me translate that for you. Anytime a book says millions of years ago, what it really means is long ago and far away. It means a fairy tale is coming next. Mm -hmm. 30 million years ago, these critters evolved. Ooh, there's that word again. You've got to watch that one, remember? Six different meanings. It says they're ancestral to both humans and modern apes. Ancestors to humans? Grandpa? What? <laughs> What big eyes you have, Grandpa. <laughs> uh, the better to see you with, my boy. 
You know, we've been teaching our kids they're nothing but an animal, and today a lot of them act like animals. Barbara Reynolds figured it out. She's a liberal journalist. She said, your kids go ape in school? Here's why. He's being taught evolution. Guess what, Johnny? You're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. Uh, you mean I'm just an animal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what do you expect? Have you noticed the rock and roll music these days is all full of death and destruction and blood? Well, the Bible says they that hate me love death. That's the problem. Kids are taught today there are no absolutes. 